Well, uh, I guess it's time to try and bake some bread. I've got uh, some loaves ready to go. I mean, loaves of dough. They're not loaves of bread yet. And uh, I'll try and start this fire up. I'm going to assume that's going to go. Uh, working alone today, which is not ideal. Uh, the dough is about 200 yards from the oven, so it's kind of a big kitchen in that sense. Um, the test today will be to, it's, it's dough that had the, the yeast immediately mixed with the dough, and that will trap all the carbon dioxide in it. And uh, then uh, it's, it's also, I've let the dough rise for like, what time is it? Six hours, I guess, right around that. And I've got uh, one with egg and one without that I'm going to do now. And then I'm also going to see, like, uh, yeah, I'm going to wait on the other two as a test to see if they rise a bunch by tomorrow morning, which I think is going to be too long for the dough. But I want to be able to compare the, the bread that. It was done, uh, I mean, I want to find out what too long is. I want to, I guess everybody online, they, and everything they say about how to do things, they don't uh, tell me what the limits are, you know, and like, what's what's too much? And and uh, and, and if I'm going to get a real understanding of how things work, then I have to explore the limits and do them wrong. And I think that's an under, generally underutilized method of learning is, is learning by exploring the limits and then uh, altering things, having enough cases where you can really, really picture uh, why things work the way they do because you understand why they don't work. So it's a little strange of a, a method, I guess, but it's, uh, I think, I mean, that's the way we build what we think is intuition. And of course, I mean, the, the people have learned things through generations. Uh, end up teaching their kids, and their kids end up uh, just knowing how to do things. But but we don't know how to do things. I, mean, <laughs> I, I don't know how to make bread, and and it seems like most families uh, should know how to make bread. I mean, it'd be ideal if they knew how to grow wheat and try to figure it out too. Uh, but so anyway, I, I, this will be a bread experiment. It's a little bit of a bummer that I'm alone. It's not fun. I'm a bad cameraman if I'm by myself, I suppose. And, uh, but anyway, uh, let's make some bread. And I'm not totally alone, of course, I've got the camera. Uh, some folks come tomorrow, or the next day, I think, and we'll see if we can uh, record and share other experiments with you, uh, the invisible people in the theoretical audience. Okay. So here's the dough, and actually we're looking pretty good temp. Uh, the temperature is close to 80. It's 75 degrees, or in Celsius, 24 something. Anyway, uh, that's a real good temperature for for the dough to be at. 80, I think, is the the optimum, or in Celsius, uh, I don't know, 26, 27. So I gotta find some molds for this dough and my fire's going, I gotta go, 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 go. It sure doesn't take much time for this to heat up. All right, so uh, I use this little pump thing again, misto object to spray the pans with a little bit of grease. Hope I don't get my fingers sticky here. Nope, that's pretty good. All right. I'm going to pop this puppy in the pan. I picked a weird shaped pan just for fun. This is a silicon glove. In this case, it's the Mark Grill Glove. Uh, the brand, whatever. And I like these silicon gloves because I don't like to burn my hands. And uh, I'm going to pop that guy in there. Now, 
I want to try and avoid burning it. So actually, I want to make sure it's not too hot. Maybe I'll just uh, prop the door a little bit like that. It's now uh, 4... <laughs> it's 420. <laughs> That's funny. I bet it's 420 in Seattle right now. Uh, right now is um, 2012, December 8th, I think, or something, maybe 7th, some. So, anyway, it's 420 here, not there. It's a little after that there. I'm sure they're already uh, got the munchies. So, yeah, so the fact is I have to remember that. I want to go around 20 minutes to 30 minutes and not cook it too quickly is the goal. Uh, the problem is I still don't have an oven thermometer, so I'm going to have to learn to guess. We'll see how it goes. And this is the egg one, and I'll try the non-egg one. This gets kind of boring. almost 30 minutes and it doesn't look browning on the outside and I wonder like does bread need to be brown on the outside is that just a cosmetic thing or what um, it's probably cooked but it might be too low a temperature I don't know I think I need a thermometer I mean this, I'm not good at guessing I don't think it's pretty hot Okay, so it's still too doughy. Uh, this is so imperfect a process. I need a thermometer. I have bad equipment. The oven's fine. Uh, but if I can't tell how hot it is, I mean, if I knew exactly how hot it was, then I would know exactly how long it should be in there, and boom, I'm done. Uh, no more thinking about it. So. Hmm. It's been uh, 40 minutes, so this bread better be done, or there's something very wrong about everything. <clears throat> I even closed the door, too. Oh, well, it looks better on the outside. Still too doughy. I'm a fucking failure. Uh. All right, that's it. Uh. All right, I'm going to put this one back in and just see what I can do with it. Fuck that bread. And I'm going to put the other one 
in as well. So now it's uh, five o'clock. Ow! Fuck! God damn it! Cooking's bullshit. I don't like it. I'm really not that into physical reality, actually. Like most of it's just kind of annoying, and sometimes it's bogus. All right, this guy's going in at five o'clock. I'm gonna leave it closed so it's hotter in there. And uh, wait, bread is better cook. Maybe it's the outside temperature too, because uh, the outside temperature is bleeding heat off the stove faster. Perhaps I don't know. Yeah, well, it should be. And uh, the fire's hot, so. Well, somewhat hot. I mean, the, the first problem we had was that we were cooking too hot, and it was burning the bread on the outside and not cooking the inside. Now it's just not really cooking, and no idea why. Um, I guess the thermometer still is the is the thing. Now this one doesn't have egg. Right, this is the one without egg. That shouldn't really matter though. It should still be bread because last time we did this. Uh, it actually worked out pretty good. We had bread to eat. Um, well, okay, so it's five. I'm going to wait for some time, see what happens. You know, eventually uh, I'll be an expert at this, and uh, that'll be excellent bread all the time. I, I think that time is coming soon. I mean, there's only so many variables, and I thought today I was going to be all cool, but it's uh, difficult when you only have uh, two sets of hands and uh, yeah still failing I guess it'll be edible bread actually it'll work out but I want a system you know I want like a, a bread making you know functioning machine system thing and uh, it's not there yet so I'll work on it Well, the birds are pretty. That's nice. So actually, I mean, it works. Mm. It's bread. It's good, but it's a system problem. Mm. It's not predictable enough. I can't tell what I'm doing. Um, I should probably pay more attention. Um, it turns out my computer works out here. It gets wireless from over there. Mm -hmm. That's fine. But that makes it hard to pay attention. Mm. It's not a bad bread though. <clears throat> I need some like balsamic vinegar. I need to learn how to make balsamic vinegar. That'd be cool. Ouch, hot. Um, I don't know how you make balsamic vinegar. Well, I'm not overly happy about uh, how things are going. The question is, why is the bread doughy in the middle? And, uh, yeah, that's doughy in the middle. And, uh, I'll put it back in, I guess. Um, I think it's not fluffy enough or something. <clears throat> um,
I mean, this is an embarrassing video. I, I am optimistic. I was optimistic. Uh, maybe I won't even upload it. I'll upload it. I'll share my failure. I mean, it's edible bread. It's good. But, and maybe, you know, I mean, it does actually dry out as it cools down. But it's too dense in the middle. I'm not getting what I want. I'm not getting an, a risingness enough. So I'm going to take control of that. I'm going to um, beat the eggs. And I'm going to make sure the yeast is mixed at exactly the right temperature. So I get a very highly active yeast mix. Um, I am using honey, not sugar. And yeast eat sugar, right? And they produce carbon dioxide. So, I'm using gluten, uh, there's issues with the sponginess and density of the dough. I was hoping that it would just magically kind of work out. Um, and it, yeah. Also, I don't really like doing things uh, by myself that, I don't know, it's nice fun. And, um, well, I mean, at least I have bread to eat, I guess. It is bread. I mean, it's fine. It's very good. Mm. But, I want, like, really fluffy bread. Really fluffy. I wonder if it's possible that too much salt's being added. Because everybody I know adds too much salt to everything. It pisses me off a lot. They put too much salt on everything there is. And salt retards yeast uh, formation. And so maybe basically the bread's being poisoned by the salt. There's still supposed to be a little bit of salt. I looked it up. I forget why there's supposed to be salt, but there's some reason. Well, something is wrong. I want bread that just, well, almost explosive bread. I just want poofy, extremely poofy bread. I want to just rip hunks of it off and dip it in yummy stuff and then eat it. <clears throat> I've been a little bit bummed out lately, but, well, very, but, uh, maybe I'll try again, I guess. People say, if you, uh, there's some you know, nifty fucking phrase that people say, like, uh, I don't know what it is, <clears throat> if you keep, like, doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result, then you're an idiot or something, you're insane or whatever, but, you know, there's also things you can say about perseverance, and, uh, creativity, and trying things that, that don't make sense to anyone until you, uh, can create something new, require you to keep at it. Perseverance. Um, it almost seems like the various aphorisms that, you know, you're supposed to guide your life by, <clears throat> um, you know, because aphorisms are very common. Uh, seem contradictory and uh, not that useful. I don't know. I mean, they're fine. They're cute, right? Aphorisms are cute. That's too doughy. In the middle, it's too doughy. <laughs> Dog likes it.
Well, I guess to wrap it up for the evening here, uh, you know, you'd think bread making would be easy, and I still got my list of excuses, I guess, but uh, I guess ultimately I have to have respect for the bread makers, <laughs> those who know how to do it well. And after I go through all this process, apparently again and again, I will have a great respect for uh, the knowledge that people have gained over centuries uh, about how to make bread. And I'm making bread, I guess. But it's not what I want. So uh, I'll uh, catch you next time on the exciting bread baking show. And uh, if you've got any advice, I'm welcome I mean, I welcome it. Uh, I mean, equipment is, is important. Like, I don't even know what temperature I'm operating at. That's not good. And, uh, yeah.